Welcome back to Woodcrafter's Corner. Man, it is good to see you again. In today's video, we are going to be discussing a few ways that you can keep yourself safe and especially that tender, tender skin on your fingers from getting cut uh, while whittling. So I have a few different methods here and a few different techniques that we're going to discuss. So let's get right to it. The first thing is equipment. Uh, so one of the most popular things you can get is a cut resistant glove like this one, which I uh, purchased on Amazon. Obviously just fits right on your hand. You can use it on both hands. Uh, I only use it on my left because I actually hold a knife with my right hand and uh, my right hand's never in any danger. Uh, but what this will allow you to do is cut through different things and as you're cutting if you slip you know and your blade comes through this is going to stop it um, it can prevent slicing movements like this or like this or if, if it's the entire blade it can stop that what it isn't good at doing is stopping the point of the blade and uh, that has gotten through a glove occasionally when i'm whittling so that is one kind of downside to these although it's way way better than not having one. And this is my preferred method, uh, so we'll just get that right out of the way. Method number two is one you see relatively often, and this is some kind of like Whittler's tape um, or sports tape, which you can buy. Um, I got mine on Amazon. And all you do with this is wrap a section around your finger that you'll be using. And for me, that is on my left hand. And then you can do it on as many fingers as you want. Traditionally, I think people mostly put them on their index fingers and their thumb, um, some on their second finger, their middle finger. But uh, for me, that is just these two. Uh, I don't necessarily prefer this method for no real reason other than it uses something up that I have to buy more of. Um, granted, it lasts a long time and it's really inexpensive. But um, in any case, that is a personal preference. So as you can see, as you're whittling here, you know, you could come along, uh, you could slip, and this is going to stop it. Again, it n doesn't do as well against something pointy, like the tip of the knife, but it actually does better than the glove. And in fact, when I was wearing the glove and doing this exact same move, I could feel it perfectly. But against this, it's just padding. So all it really does is block the, the knife there. So that's pretty nice. Plus, it's a lot less bulky. Um, if you're whittling, whittling for a long period of time, you want to feel things a little more tactile, it is nice to have this uh, as a guard, but also leaving the majority of your hand. It's kind of like having reverse fingerless gloves. Um, and plus, to take them off, they're not sticky, except to themselves, so you could potentially reuse these if you really wanted to, uh, but I don't think most people do. One of the biggest downsides, though, is that if you were to slice through, you can see it doesn't have any cut-resistant measures, so I just cut it with scissors. So while it's not easy to cut through, it's certainly possible, whereas it's much less likely with a glove. So just take with that what you will, but it's certainly better than nothing, and a lot of people prefer this, so nothing wrong with that. Now one other aspect to safety that I don't think a lot of people discuss is having the right technique. Now I have a video here about your four basic cuts, and essentially there's certain things that you never want to do, and that is to pull towards you in an uncontrolled way where you could easily slip and cut yourself. Uh, and the same is true of going this direction because if you are holding your knife here, a lot, a lot of wood, if you're going with the grain, can split in ways you don't expect and you could easily, by pushing, injure your, your finger uh, or injure something out here or just break off a section you didn't, didn't intend to, which is all not ideal. So work on your technique. So if you were to work towards you, you would use a, a very controlled pairing cut like this. Um, you would work in a way that keeps your thumb out of the way. So if I were to come down here, I don't have my thumb here to, to get in the way. If I were to slip, I keep it out of the way like this. And it's always in slow, small moves. But again, you can watch my video on uh, that for a little bit more information on technique. But one major part of technique that, again, I don't think gets talked about a lot is using a sharp knife. Uh, it may seem like a dull knife would be safer overall, at least in theory, and technically I suppose that's true. But as you're cutting, if you have a sharp knife like this, you can do these small little movements and you know exactly how your knife is going to behave, when it's going to stop, and... Um, it just powers through resistance in a way that allows you much more control. So as you can see here, I'm making these tiny movements, I'm, I'm moving around, and I'm not really in any danger here of slipping, and so it's pretty easy. Now if I were to switch to a dull knife like this one, the opposite is true. If I want to get through a section 
I'm like maybe I want to take out this chunk right here then I really have to push whereas with this one it's just a single little glide right through the same is true if you're making a bigger cut I really have to push and if your uh, piece of wood is thinner than this or if you're working towards yourself like this it's going to be so easy to just skid off that wood come down here even though you feel like you're being controlled and that dull knife can uh, cut through your skin easy whereas it was having a tough time with the wood so it's unpredictable um, it's, un it's not easy to control and so a sharp knife will not only make it easier to whittle and uh, make those designs really really pop uh, especially in the smaller ones but it also is a lot safer and more predictable to use so that is why you always want to use as sharp a knife as possible for many different reasons now one last thing that people do as a term as a way to physically block the knife from getting into their skin as they're whittling is a uh, finger guard and a lot of times that looks just like somebody cut off the finger or thumb of a glove and just slipped it on That's certainly something you could do even with a glove like this or if you have an old workman's glove I personally don't like those a lot uh, especially the leather ones because even though they do block uh, The knife they're a lot thicker and they make it harder to move your digits and different things like that so I don't actually have one to show you but that is another thing just get a thumb guard or a finger guard uh, if you have one available uh, or just cut up a, an old glove that you might have. I definitely prefer this for the reasons that it's easy. You just slip it right on and you're good to go. You don't have to use something up. These gloves last a long time. And I'll leave a link to that in the description of the ones I bought. They're not terribly expensive either. Uh, so these work really well. And so with that, those are my tips for beginner's whittling safety. Um, get something to cover your fingers and really help deflect that knife if it were to slip. Uh, I never whittle without one. Always use a sharp knife and just be careful with your technique. Uh, practice the four basic beginner's cuts and always whittle in a controlled, slow manner, taking out small sections at a time rather than big ones. And with that, you'll have everything you need to keep those fingers safe and cut free. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me out a ton, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.